Hey, what's going on? Eric Cortina, Texas Barn Aluminiums. Today, I'm gonna show you how to spray acid stain. All right, Darren, what are you doing here? Get ready to stain the floors. All right, we're gonna stain the concrete today. So we got some water, we got our acid stain. We're actually doing two colors of acid stain here. What are we doing, Darren? Vintage umber. I'm a late tan. So, we're actually doing two colors of concrete stain on this one. We're gonna do vintage umber and my late tan. Uh, we're gonna layer the two, okay? We're gonna do uh, my late tan first. We're gonna do one to one ratio. And then after we put it down, we're gonna go check it out. If it's stained really well, we're gonna come back and do the another coat with vintage umber. And depending on how dark it is, we're gonna decide how strong we put the second coat on, all right? Typically, on the vintage umber, I don't like to do one to one because it gets really dark. So typically, I like to start with two to one. However, <laughs> we're gonna do the Malay tan first, and then we'll decide. So as you guys can see, we have it all staged. This is the vintage umber. We got some muriatic acid, and I'll show you why we have that. We got water, and of course, we have the Malay tan over there. So it's all here. We have uh, our area here so we can mix uh, we just want to make sure that we don't drip anything on the concrete because this is not going to be stained so if we drip anything here it's going to be a problem and of course everything's going to be in and out of this door we're going to come in in here and we're going to go out through here the house is perfectly clean the concrete this is what you want okay you do not want anything on the concrete. So all the concrete has been cleaned, has been prepped. Uh, you want the concrete to be perfectly clean, okay? Uh, get rid of the, the pencil marks, get rid of uh, chalk line, get rid of everything, okay? Whenever you stain, that concrete needs to be perfectly clean. Not only that, you also need to protect your doors, tape them up, whatever, your tubs. Everything that you don't want stain on needs to be covered up. So that's been done. So now it's ready to stain. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so the reason he's not covering up the door is these are temporary doors, so we don't worry about that too much. However, you need to make sure the jam gets protected. Plus, you need to seal that gap between the jam and the door, because what ends up happening is when you go to spray that door, or close to that door, the stain will actually go right through that gap and stain your uh, your jam. And then if it's a paint grade, it really doesn't matter, but these are all stain grade, which pretty much ruins the entire jam because once you stain it, you cannot get rid of it unless you have a darker stain. <laughs> but other than that, it's pretty much ruined. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in a bucket. We're gonna put two gallons of uh, acid stain, two gallons of water, and we're gonna do uh, about 32 ounces of muriatic acid. The muriatic acid is just gonna make sure that while we're spraying the acid that it's really gonna penetrate into that concrete. Uh, nobody really tells you to do that, but I have found that's the best way to really get that stain stick. If you prep the concrete properly, you shouldn't have a problem, uh, but sometimes it's a problem regardless, so. I like to do that muriatic acid just for insurance purposes. All right, so we got it all in there. Now we're going to mix it. You kind of want to use a plastic paddle because muriatic acid, but we can just wash it off. Okay, so now it's ready to go. It's mixed. So now we're gonna put half of that into the sprayer and I'm gonna go start spraying. And then uh, whenever I run out, I'll come back. We'll top it off with whatever's left from here. And then uh, by then we'll gauge how much we have done and how much left we have. And then we'll decide how much more to mix, okay? It should take about four gallons of stain, which means eight gallons total. Uh, Derek's gonna stay out here while I go in there and spray, and then we'll just communicate with each other. We're gonna use a backpack 
We're gonna use a back. <coughs> We're going to use a backpack. <laughs> what are we using there? <laughs> it's called a backpack sprayer. <laughs> So we're gonna use a backpack sprayer. Um, these are, you can get them a uh, track supply. We try to get one, maybe two uses out of it. We always keep a new sprayer in the trailer because once they start dripping, you're done. Uh, they make good sprayers that are meant for acid stain, but these, uh, these are cheap enough that we just use these. Uh, at some point, I'm going to review some sprayers that are meant specifically for acid stain but they still have, I don't think they have a bulletproof sprayer yet. I don't know, I may be wrong. Anyway, this is what we're gonna use. Like I said, we use it once or twice, and then once it starts dripping, we pretty much just throw them away because uh, acid stain is, is it's just horrendous on these sprayers. It, it'll, it'll ruin them. What happens, it'll ruin the seals, and then once they start leaking, you're done. Uh, that's another reason I use my uh, uh, jacket that pretty much is rainproof because if it leaks on my back it's not gonna get on me uh, also always carry a rag with you it doesn't matter what kind of spray you have always carry a rag when you're done spraying put that on the tip because you do not want to drip if you drip it's gonna it's gonna be noticeable so you don't want that all right let's get to work <laughs> knock everything over <laughs> I gotta got a funnel <laughs> All right, so uh, every can of stain comes with a funnel. You just have to discover it. All right, Darren. All right, hold. He never has a handle. I'm about to start spraying. You see the shower right here? That's where I like to test my sprayer, my pattern, and make sure it's not dripping. Uh, that's gonna get tiled up anyway, so that's where I test. Okay, so everything's working well, so I'm gonna start spraying. You wanna spray in a circular motion so you don't have any patterns in the concrete. Okay, so let me show you. So when you get to this wall, make sure you don't spray onto the other room, okay? Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna stain it right now and then when you go around and do the other room, you're gonna put stain on top of that stain and the entire edge is gonna be darker and you're gonna see it. So be very careful about that. All right, so I still had some stain. However, I didn't think I had enough to finish the entire room, so I went ahead and get, got more. You do not want to run a stain right in the middle of the room, okay? So, this is just like sealing. Keep a wet edge, and if you have to stop, stop right at the doorway, okay? Um, this sprayer is leaking, you know, more than it should. So, like I said, always keep a rag. I went and got some gloves, I forgot to put some on earlier. Uh, I'm gonna show you what to do if you do drip on the concrete, okay? So, let's just say you drip by accident, all right? Of course, you always wanna keep a rag, but if you happen to drip, like I'm doing here, okay? Immediately spray it, okay? Spray it and feather it out, okay? And then uh, when you come back, that's just gonna be, that spot's just gonna be a little bit darker than everything else, but it'll look natural, okay? However, if you just leave the, if you just leave the stain drop there, 
that it's not going to look natural. So this is one way to work around the drip. All right, so this sprayer is pretty much done. We can replace the wand, but it's not worth it. So uh, this is the second time we've used it. I could have started with a new one, but I wanted you guys to see what can happen and if it does happen, how to handle it, all right? So that's why I always want to keep a rag. And if you guys notice, right when I, when I was done, I kept the bucket right by the door. And right when I got done spraying, I stuck the nozzle in a bucket because you do not want to drip any outside absolutely there's no way to do it uh, to fix it anyway so if you however if you drip some outside immediately get some ammonia and a wire brush pour the ammonia right on there and start scrubbing the ammonia is going to neutralize the acid and the wire brush is gonna hopefully take it off so uh, that's how you handle that all right so, like I said, this sprayer is going in the dumpster right now. We're done with it. And uh, we have a new one in the trailer. And uh, so the next coat we're going to do with the, with the new sprayer. And we'll just get some more. Uh, so, also when you're taking off your gloves, I took one glove off. Have that, that bag that I had. Put it in this fist right here. Put the other glove on and then everything's in there. So. All right, so now we're gonna let it dry. It's gonna take about two hours or so. Then we're gonna come back and put down the vintage umber. That one's gonna be lighter. Uh, again, depending on what it looks like when we get back. But anyway, we'll show you that. It's been about three hours since we got done spraying and it's still not quite dry enough. Uh, we wanna make sure that it's completely dry before we go ahead and put the next coat. Otherwise, so what happens is when you stain the floor, there's gonna be some residue, some reaction that's gonna happen with the stain, right? So you wanna make sure that it's completely dry before you put the next coat, or it's gonna just gonna sit on top of that first coat. So you just have to wait it out. So it's about 50 degrees today. It's not gonna dry as fast as if it was 100 degrees. So again, you just gotta wait it out. That's why I like to clean the slab completely on day one and then come back on day two and immediately first thing in the morning put down the first coat let it dry put down the second coat and then you come back the next day and you start neutralizing the acid and then cleaning it all up so we're not leaving until we do the second coat if this was in the summer uh we would have been done a long time ago but hey gotta do what you gotta do all right so this is the uh, vintage umber and you can clearly see how much darker this is and this is why I like to do this one second and I like to thin it down two to one with water. Uh, I'd rather do an extra coat. If, it, if the first coat's too light, I'd rather do another light coat for a total of two light coats than try to get it right on the first coat and for it to be too dark. Because once it's too dark, that's it. It's too dark. <laughs> All right, so we prepped the stain. We made two different batches, and you can clearly see how much darker the stain is. Uh, so, again, this is mixed two to one ratio. Two water, one stain, and of course we added the muriatic acid. So we got a new sprayer here that we're gonna use this go around because the other one was done, so we threw that one away. Like I said, you always wanna have an extra sprayer, always. All right, Darren. Ready? Mm -hmm. We're pretty much going to do the same thing all over again. I'm going to go in there, spray everything down uh, with a new color. And uh, we're going to let it dry and we'll check it again tomorrow. So we'll get here tomorrow and we'll mop it. Uh, once you mop it, it's going to get you a pretty close idea what it's going to look like once it's sealed. If the color is good, then neutralize it, clean it up. If it's too light, you can apply another coat. Okay? Uh, I have a feeling this is going to be good enough, but we'll see. <laughs> what you did. Darren. Yeah, it's my fault. 
You learn how to put a mask on. <laughs> safety hurts. Safety, yeah, safety hurts. Here you go, princess. All right, so this is what it looks like after the second coat. As you can see, it has plenty of color on it. Tomorrow when we clean it up, we're gonna make sure that it has good color and uh, we didn't miss any spots or there's not too many light spots. If that's the case, we're just gonna neutralize it, clean it up and let it dry for a day or two before we seal it. Okay, so you guys saw how we apply the stain. It's fairly simple. Obviously, prep work is super important. Uh, concrete needs to be perfectly clean and do it in a circular motion uh, otherwise you're gonna get patterns I've seen people try to fan it and they end up with patterns all over the concrete it, it just doesn't look good another thing is when you transition from one room to another you want to do the big open area last okay and then you want to do it all in one pass you don't want to run out of stain halfway through okay so always try to leave uh, an edge right in the hallway that, that you can't see it all right so for example if, if you have a hallway from a living room try to stop there go do all the bedrooms first and then when you do the living room then at that point you can do everything else of course mix it bulk mix more than you think you need if you think you can need five or six gallons mix seven mix an extra gallon extra you do not want to run out okay you want to make sure you have too much is way better than not enough and uh, obviously you want to have a helper okay is it necessary no, it's not 100% necessary, but it's very helpful, okay? Uh, you know, somebody help you put on your sprayer. Uh, you know, get your rag if you need it, whatever, okay? And uh, last, you wanna have extra parts. You know, you wanna have an extra sprayer. You wanna have more stain on your knee. You wanna have too much of everything because <clears throat> there is no stopping. Once you get going, you cannot stop. If you get halfway through the room and you stop, it dries on you, you can never uh, feather it out enough to that you can't see the seam. You cannot hide it. So uh, Again prep work is everything anyway uh, I'm very confident that we're not gonna need another coat However, if we do need another coat, it's very easy just to put another light coat over the entire thing You don't want to go too dark at first because if you go too dark, you're done If you go too light, you can always put another coat on here. Very simple. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's all I got for today We'll see you next time. We are Texas Barnuminiums <laughs>